News tonight out of Benton Harbor, Michigan. Benton Harbor is a mostly poor city. It's also mostly African American. It is also the first city in Michigan to have its locally elected officials stripped of their power last year by the state. Under Republican Governor Rick Snyder's souped up emergency manager law, your right to vote for who you want to run your town can be overruled by the governor, by the state. And Benton Harbor is the first city they did that to. The state says Benton Harbor is too broken to be allowed a democratic form of government anymore. So instead, Governor Snyder turned the town over to a single unelected manager who has unilateral power to do whatever he wants, no matter what the voters say. That manager says the elected mayor and the elected commission are not in charge anymore. So they are not in charge anymore. In Rick Snyder's Michigan, democracy is considered part of the problem. In places like Benton Harbor, at least, democracy must go before progress can begin. And accordingly, what counts as progress in Benton Harbor is up to the emergency manager guy now. Under Rick Snyder's law, this unelected emergency official can fire the elected officials, can cancel contracts, can dissolve the whole town itself, can sell off the town's assets. Benton Harbor did not have many public assets, uh, but it did have this. A voice, a publicly owned radio station broadcasting out of Benton Harbor City Hall. Now, the signal from WBHC 96.5 FM only reaches about three miles. It belongs to the town. They broadcast by the town, for the town, and about the town. In February, exercising his unilateral power under Michigan law, the emergency manager shuttered Benton Harbor's radio station and put the whole thing up for sale on eBay for $5,000. You get the cords, you get the microphones and everything included. Come and get it. It turns out that even if Rick Snyder's state law says the emergency guy can auction off the city down to the last office chair, under federal law, you can't do that. You cannot sell a low-power radio station that way. You can't just sell it on eBay. A broadcast license like Benton Harbor has can only go to a local nonprofit or a government body, period, not just to the highest bidder you find online. The emergency manager guy, therefore, had to take down the listing on eBay and find a qualified buyer. And now we know who's planning to buy the Benton Harbor Town radio station. Provided the FCC agrees to the transfer, the new owner will be the Benton Harbor Area Schools. The school district is on the verge of getting the town's radio station so the students can practice on it. Benton Harbor's emergency manager says the station will be better off in the schools. He says, quote, we believe it's going to be so much more useful in their hands than ours. More useful? More useful than what? Well, what was it used for before? In addition to news and music, it was used for dissent, for expressing dissent about the town being stripped of its democratic rights, for instance. When the Reverend Jesse Jackson came to Benton Harbor to protest Michigan handing over towns to state-appointed czars, he sat down at the microphone at the town radio station and spoke his mind, right there on the publicly owned Benton Harbor radio station. I guess if you happen to be the state-appointed czar who is being protested on that radio station, that may not seem like a very useful use of that station. It may not seem very pleasant. We've learned something else about Benton Harbor. The emergency manager had been making noises about winding down his time there, but the restoration of Benton Harbor's democracy turns out not to be imminent. Uh, the deputy state treasurer told city residents last week, quote, we don't believe that we are there yet in Benton Harbor. Later this year, he said, we're going to be working with folks in the community to talk about the picture that you have and we have as to what Benton Harbor's future ought to look like. Now, you could see that as generous considering that Benton Harbor's vision for Benton Harbor's future matters not at all in legal terms. Local residents have been stripped of their right to have a say-so. They have not had local democracy there since last year, since Rick Snyder took it away. What Governor Rick Snyder and the Republicans in Michigan State Legislature have done is upend the idea that in America, we elect people to represent us. In America, we are governed by a democratic form of government. Michigan Republicans are ripping that idea out by the roots. If there are problems to be solved, we do not do it by democratic means anymore in Michigan. We suspend democracy in order to get stuff done. We suspend it indefinitely. On the local level, on Rick Snyder's say-so, it means you can be stripped of your right to vote for officials to govern your town. On the state level, though, if you are a representative of the wrong party, you may not be allowed to vote at the state level, in the state legislature. This picture, first posted on Eclecta blog, shows Michigan House Democrats last week asking for a vote in the legislature and not being allowed one. Republicans in the Michigan House are now being sued in court 
by their colleagues across the aisle, sued for stopping Democrats from voting in the state legislature. The Republicans are being sued for that. This is an amazing story. Amazing that it has come to this, to one political party suing another for the right to vote. And amazing that this afternoon, the state Democrats won an early round in court. A county judge today issued a temporary injunction ordering Michigan House Republicans to let the minority party vote. The court also put on hold several laws the Republicans passed improperly. This order that you can see here with its scratch outs and with the judges scrawling all over it, this is big news in Michigan with real implications for whether in America we solve problems by voting, by democracy, or whether we solve problems by suspending democracy. Michigan Republicans say they'll appeal today's ruling that lawmakers must follow the state constitution, that the Democrats have to be allowed to vote. They're asking the state attorney general to appeal the ruling immediately, and the attorney general's office says he will. Michigan, you are so epic this year. Uh, we are still reporting this story out fully. We're going to have the full story for you in coming days. But now it's time for the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell. I hope you have a great night.